Hello, everyone. Welcome to another On This Day in Canadian Military History live stream. Uh, my name is Brad Sinqua. I hold a PhD in History from the University of Ottawa, where I focus on military history and Canadian military history more specifically. Uh, I run this channel for that reason. I enjoy the topic very, very much. Uh, so these uh, today's video is a reaction video to a video made by the Canadian Le Royal Canadian Legion about Battle of Dieppe, uh, narrated by the late Tra Alex Trebek. Uh, it, it should be an interesting one. I've never seen it before. Like uh, these, most of these reaction videos, I've never seen the videos. So I like to kind of, you know, off the cuff, think about it and talk about it and my conclusions, reactions, and, you know, kind of in real time instead of kind of like rehearsing something, you know, I just kind of like doing that. Uh, so this is part of uh, a series of ones I've been looking at. I decided to first start with one about D-Day just because it's the topic probably I know the best. Uh, and then I got some suggestions or sorry, some recommendations uh, that I do other ones. So I like, did the Italian campaign. Uh, and this one was another request from a viewer. So this one is about Dieppe, uh, and they requested it specifically. So I'm going to take a look, see what we got. Um, yeah, I've been there, been to Dieppe, been on the ground there. Uh, I've studied this one pretty intensively uh, quite a few years ago and been reading about it ever since. Uh, there's a lot going on with this one. Uh, I'll say that now. It's, 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 it's a controversial topic for all kinds of reasons. I don't know what they're going to do with in terms of the reason behind it or anything like that. I have no idea. Uh, they might just talk about the battle itself. Who knows? So let's just get into it and, and, and see what they have for us. So yeah, some pictures taken after the raid, which is always interesting. Taken by the Germans, right? Not by Canadians, because they're all POWs. Like that there, it's German film. Because I have some on the channel myself. There's a little bit there. So from a few years ago, of course. Yeah, here's the aftermath of the raid on the beach. Incredibly violent. It was called Operation Jubilee. Yep. But today, it's better known as the disaster at Dieppe. Or just Dieppe. Well, that's all you have to say, really. Is Dieppe and Canadians know what you're talking about. Britain's raid on the German-held coast of France in the Second World War was supposed to test Hitler's fortress Europe. The goal was a simple one. Seize a major port, gather intelligence, destroy critical defenses, then get out. Right there is, again, this is unavoidable when it comes to the up. Um, why? <laughs> you know, why? Why does this happen? Why do they send an almost an entire division? They do send a whole division, plus some commando units. A well-defended port that they knew was well-defended. Uh, and basically just slammed them against the German defenses. Uh, David O'Keefe, who's been on the channel uh, himself, uh, has kind of blown this one up recently. Uh, I mean, fairly recently, within the last 15 years, about how this whole raid was needed uh, to cover up what is called a pinch operation or a pinch raid about the German Enigma machines. They needed a reason. They needed to cover up them going into the app to get the codes and any material they could get, including machines uh, from the German naval uh, Enigma codes. Uh, to help, you know, crack the code and continue uh, with that because the Germans had changed uh, the Enigma system. Uh, not an expert on that one. You can find lots of other stuff on this elsewhere online. Uh, but uh, essentially that is it. They, they had cracked the code and Germans changed it. They needed to crack it again. And they needed that material that they had before to help do that. So this is what DF is about, uh, according to David O'Keefe. It's get in there and get the material and then you have to cover this up, right? Because otherwise they'll know that the code is compromised and then just change it again. Uh, so this is... Uh, What's going on here? Another popular one that doesn't really have any real support, to be honest, in the primary documents is that it was done to test German defenses. That's not really uh, mentioned before the raid even at all. Uh, there had been other raids. They are no mentions of you know testing defenses. They have different objectives. Uh, but testing defenses only comes up after, particularly after it's such a failure and such a large loss of life. Like, I mean, the casualty rates are are massive for this kind of thing. Uh, and it's it, it, it's kind of like a post facto justification. I mean, there was lessons learned. I'm not denying that. Lessons learned at Dieppe that helped Normandy. But that's not the reason why they went into Dieppe. Uh, there's all kinds of reasons that are, are also posited by other authors, like hubris, like uh, Lord Mountbatten. It's later Lord Mountbatten, but he's the head of uh, Combined operations at this point, wanting to test out different ways of doing these kinds of things, how they go about doing it, 
you know, combining naval, air force, army, all of this stuff in a landing operation. Uh, what that looks like, how you go about doing it, what objectives can be reached, uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, that's another one before that he just really wanted it to happen. Uh, there's been books about it and arguments that he wasn't even authorized to do so, but just kind of did it and everybody just kind of went with it uh, after it had been initially canceled uh, in its first iteration called Operation Rudder. Um, but again, that's a bit suspect in the documents. There's like lack of smoking gun there, which is interesting. Um, uh, anyway, so that's given one of the reasons um, uh, other than also why the Canadians are involved. They wanted literally the Canadians put themselves into this one. This wasn't a British trick. None of that stuff that you also often hear about, particularly the First World War, but also some stuff in the second. This kind of Canadians as clo you know colonials being you know cannon fodder for the Brits and the Imperials to slaughter them when they didn't want to send their own people in. This isn't true. They wanted a British division. Actually, they wanted it all be commandos initially, but uh, it just didn't have the manpower. Uh, so, but the Canadians wanted in because they had been fighting it. And it was a long time. They didn't want to get into the fight uh, after the Americans had did, right? And who had only come in in late 1941. Uh, Canada had only fought at Hong Kong at this point. Uh, so it was it's got a lot of political things at home, uh, military reasons for the men and Britain themselves who wanted to get into the fight. They wanted to fight. Uh, a good number of them, uh, when the original iteration of Rudder was canceled, uh, again, this is apocryphal, I think, because I couldn't really track the, the source. Uh, were crying and upset that they couldn't go. Um, so I read that a couple of times. So, but I couldn't find the primary source. You know, sometimes that happens. Um, it's just kind of like hearsay or from another book. It comes from one source and you, you just trace it back to there. That's kind of what happened uh, a couple of years ago when I was doing more in depth on this stuff. Uh, don't remember off the top of my head, but uh, that's that's kind of what is understood here. So. And it comes up with an idea of conversation and sorry to take up a lot of time with it and before the videos even really started, but it is important to know. And again, there's lots of different good resources available out there online that you can check out. It can explain a lot of this. And, and I know David O'Keefe has been on all kinds of videos and channels, other channels and things like that uh, talking about it. So um, check those out. I'll probably link some down below for you. Um, connected to World War II TV, which is a great channel and you should check out if you haven't but none of those objectives was achieved. Dieppe was meticulously planned, but was so flawed mm. that failure was inevitable. It was quite flawed, yes. On the morning of August 19, 1942, this isn't from more than 200 Allied ships and landing craft closed in on the port city and the beaches east and west of Dieppe. The beaches were codenamed Green, red, white, and blue. And then the commandos on the flanks taking out uh, coastal guns. This is from the fighting. This is German sorts here. And engaged Luftwaffe pilots in dogfights overhead. Yeah, there's a lot of that. On the English Channel, British warships bombarded the shore. Not really. Clearing coastal defenses and providing a smoke screen for the attack. A little bit, but not much. Didn't make much of a difference. Six thousand troops stormed the beaches. More than 80% of them were Canadian. Yeah. Mostly because from the commandos. The, tops, the enemy could see the full length of each beach yeah. and every soldier and tank. Yeah, death light positions. Okay. And that is not, okay. At Blue Beach, east of the Okay, that, going back there, that explosion, you know, I'm just going to go back. Um. And every soldier and tank crossing it. So you can see it, it looks like it got hit. All right. Uh, a, this is not from Dieppe, because how could the cameraman or camera person be on the shore? <laughs> you take this look and it killed. I think I barely stand up on the beach, let alone film something like this. This was a criticism I had from D uh, the D-Day video. There's tons of footage out there. There's different ways you can do it. This is a bit of a, this one is a bit particularly problematic to me because it seems misrepresentative of what happened. What this is is from later, and it's not being hit by any shell. That's it's on purpose. It's it's from a newsreel, a Canadian newsreel, where they've waterproofed the tank. They developed a system where they could blow off the waterproofing. Uh, it's like some sort of putty when they got on shore because you don't need it anymore, right? But you can keep moving. You don't have to get out and like take everything off and all that kind of stuff. It just blows off and you keep going. Like this makes it look like a tank just got hit. But Dieppe, on one of the beaches they just mentioned, when A, that doesn't even look like Dieppe, any of the beaches. Not really at all, unless you just focus on a very narrow area. But it's just that's not what's happening here. And I think it's a bit misleading of what's going on here. Again, they're not saying anything about these sources until later. They'll just, just do a quick credits like they've done for the other ones. I'm assuming. <laughs> 
But yeah, that's Blue not Beach going on here. Blue Beach was bad. Royal Regiment and the Black Watch were Again, not from Dia. There was very little the element of the Black fire. Watch. It was mostly the Royal Regiment. Yeah, those mortars were brutal. Absolutely brutal. On Green Beach to the west, the Raiders had to cross a river on a single bridge. Well, they made a mistake, weren't they? They were slain in the wrong spot. Viciously. From the cliffs. On Red and White Beach and Rain beaches. Itself, Many of the Canadian tanks stalled in the small round beach stones that jammed in their tracks. And so there's another thing that's come up with Divya recently. This is actually, I have the stones that they're talking about here. The galettes, as they're called. Uh, they're um, my, but a little bit smaller than my fist, but, you know, about the fist size they can be. They're different sizes. Anyway, there's this myth. A lot of it, I don't know if myth is the right word. It's, it's becoming explored a little more that the tanks didn't even get off this, you know, shallow part here. Or shell, whatever. The initial landing point that's covered in these tiny little rocks. Uh, that's apparently not the case. Most of them actually didn't get off the beach. They just couldn't get off the defenses. The defenses were so well built and the engineers didn't get to them to blow them that they could get across. Uh, a lot of the tanks came back actually to provide covering fire for the withdrawal. So, and they're hit constantly. I mean, there's accounts of guys who survived this stuff of their tanks just being pinged constantly. They look like they didn't make it off the beach. They did, they just came back and then they were pummeled. So then that some of them got off with this and some of the landing craft, some were, most of them were taken prisoner because they were basically just became pillboxes to defend those who were trying to get out. I mean, the bravery of those people uh, in those tanks was tremendous. But again, that's another one that's being explored and looked at more in depth uh, lately. So it's another one of those kind of enduring myths about this because of the footage and the photos that the Germans took after the fact. And of course, they want to make it look like it was an outright failure from the beginning, whereas the tanks actually didn't do what everyone thinks they did. Uh, everyone so trapped on the beach, popularly. soldiers were caught in a deadly crossfire from the German machine guns. Again, none of this is the... Uh, none of it. Realizing the raid was doomed, British commanders ordered the surviving troops to evacuate from the beaches. This is the from after the fact. Imagine, the exit was chaotic. Yeah, well, dead and wounded were yeah. everywhere. Many more were shot or drowned as they tried to escape to yeah. their landing craft, waiting offshore. Now, at first, newspapers back home in Canada reported Dieppe as a great victory. Well, nobody knew any Every different. objective is achieved on nine-hour foray into France. There was a lot of lying going on, the but it didn't last when the casualty list came in, obviously. Once the names of the dead and wounded became known to the public, shock was felt across the entire nation. In all, Canadian casualties totaled 3,367, including 907 dead, and 1,874 men captured. Yeah, there's a lot of POWs. And that's just added in saying I don't know what that is. They're not marching to me. CBC now. reporter Robert Bowman, who spent eight hours ashore with Canadian soldiers on the bloody beaches of Dieppe, said, we have suffered heavy losses and I saw our men die. Hmm. But never have I seen men die more bravely or fight with such great This heart is from an exercise later. As our Canadian troops. Yeah, it's just brutal. It was the Canadian Army's costliest day of the war, yep. and one that will forever be remembered with infamy and regret. Well, all defeats are regretted, right? That's just hindsight right there for you, which happens all the time in military history, history in general. Yeah, so another good one. Um, again, it's, how do I say this? It's it's complicated. It is complicated in the sense that not everyone believes that, you know, the intelligence element was kind of the driving factor here. Um, like I mentioned earlier, with the David O'Keefe stuff. No, not everyone believes that theory. Um, there's still lots of debate about it and all this stuff. I uh, don't want to get into that, but I just, it's an interesting element of all of this. Like, what's the reason? Does the reason matter uh, at the end of the day? I mean, yes, it does, but it's not going to make anybody feel better about what happened, right? Uh, it, it may help some people, and it has. I mean, the, David O'Keefe talked to a lot of veterans of this who survived the POW camps and got off the beaches. Uh, and to some of them, it seemed to make a difference. Knowing that, you know, their comrades died for a reason that was justified instead of just being, you know, slammed against German defenses. And just a quick aside, for those of you who have been there or seen the photos of it even today, it just makes no sense. Why would you do this? This is such a bad idea. Like Blue Beach is literally your pendant. There's one way off. I think there's still only one or two ways off that beach today. And it's 
it's, it's difficult now and no one's shooting at you. It's just because it's so steep and so many rocks and all this stuff. Uh, all the other beaches are just not as bad, but once you're pinned in between these cliffs, it, it, it just becomes a turkey shoot and there's hardly any way forward. Uh, and they talked about that naval bombardment, which did next to nothing. I mean, four inch guns against concrete does next to nothing from the, what it was, destroyers that was used. They don't mention that, but uh, that's what it was. And the air battle, which is starting to get more attention, which is a good thing because it should. Um, but again, lots of debate about what happened and what that means. Uh, I think I talked about this on another video. I'll link it down below, but uh, about uh, this fascination and defeat that people sometimes have. Uh, I argue a lot of people do, and not just Canadians, just in general, about military history. A lot of people try to take positives from defeats, which is not a bad thing. I argue that's actually a good thing, particularly in my dissertation, which is on the Battle of Hong Kong. Um, but I just don't think Dieppe's going to get solved ever. It's going to be debated until the end of time. As long as the app is remembered, it'll be debated about why it happened, what was the reasons, what went wrong, who was doing what, who to blame, all that stuff. Um, it's just an interesting question. I know a lot of people like talking about it. I just don't think it's ever going to end. And, and getting to definitive proof for any of this stuff is, is next to difficult. I mean, the, the, the pinch kind of thesis, if you want to call it that, um, seems to have lots of support for it in the documentation. I'm not hesitant about it, to be honest. Um, I've seen some of the documentation myself. There's just a few things I just haven't had the time to check. Like I literally found some interesting documents about Dieppe and I do plan on having David O'Keefe on the channel to talk about Dieppe specifically. I just need some time to, to go through some documents I wanna look at that I'm just, I have some questions. <laughs> and, and, and so I'll kind of keep that vague for now. Uh, and kind of as a teaser for that, for that, hopefully this summer, possibly around the anniversary, we'll see. Uh, hopefully I can do something like that for it, which would be awesome. Uh, anyway, so thanks again for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. It's a bit longer one. Sorry about that. It's just there's a lot here. <laughs> TF is a topic you can talk about forever and for years, and people do. Uh, so again, if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot with getting more people to notice the channel and, and getting more support for it, which will help these stories reach more people, which is ultimately my goal. Uh, Canadian military history sometimes takes a backseat, and I'm trying to fix that in many ways I can and, you know, not let that happen. So please help if you can in that way. You can also become a patron and links down below for everything like that. So please do check out all of that stuff and, and uh, some of the other videos as well, but the reactions, I've got a playlist that I'll include because uh, there's quite a few of them, but uh, I'll keep building them up. And if there's anything you want to see, uh, any video doesn't have to be Legion or anything, anything Canadian military history, sorry, you want me to take a look at, please let me know. Uh, leave your comments below and, and I'll check them out. Uh, see what's going on because there's just lots of stuff out there a lot of good a lot of bad a lot in between um and uh, it's not just here to roast stuff it's not what i'm trying to do i'm just trying to find stuff and see things that people are interested in what's popular and see what we got going on if we're not talking about this stuff then what's the point so that's kind of the thinking so if you could if you have something in mind please comment down below it helps me out a lot so thanks again for watching i'll see you on the next one